Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. Are you interested in trying HD Zero? But you don't have any HD Zero goggles? Well, now you can, because Emacs makes these HD Zero box goggles. Is it, is it in the shot? All right, here they are, the Emacs Transporter 2 HD HD Zero goggles. Let's see what's inside this box. As you can see inside the box, you get the goggles themselves with the little screen here. Some pieces of paper. Some more, uh oh. This is the updating cable that you need to update your HD Zero VTX and your goggles and all that shit because you update the VTX from the goggles. Comes with a USB C cord because you charge it via USB C. It has an internal battery. And it comes with two of these little rubber ducky antennas. I only have one, but it did come with two. I lost the other one somehow. I actually already filmed my flying portion of this. I'm filming the unboxing second, but showing it first. It's a whole mind fuck. Now let's get into the goggles. These are this. This is the same shell as the EMAT. What is this? This is the same shell as the Emax goggles that I've reviewed before and the little ready to fly kits and all that shit. They're 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 beginner goggles. They're definitely beginner goggles. What you do is kind of pull that out on both sides. Now my issues with these, it's the same shell, so I know I have the same issue, is they don't go out far enough. I have to hold them a little bit farther from my face for everything to be clear. I can't find my glasses, so it's fucking whatever. It's kind of uh it's kind of my problem. The thing I do love about these though is this. The screen is detachable, it just magnets on. So, on my other ones, I just took this off, and this is my main little like DVR screen, you know what I mean? I watch this, I record people's flights, I take it to the field, I'm like, oh, let me watch you fly on my screen, so I don't have to turn my goggles on. It looks like now I have one for HD Zero, and it's got a little fan on the back. That's about the only difference I can see as far as the screen, is it's got a little fan on the back, and it's got some little buttons. Wait, does the other one have some little buttons? No, on the other one, the buttons are on the side, like right there. On this one, they're on the back, boop doop It's got a fan, and of course it has HD Zero inside. The goggles seem to be the exact same shell as all the other kits. And like I was saying, for me personally, they kind of have to be like about that far away for me to like see clearly, otherwise they're blurry, but I just, I have bad eyes. You know, I kind of want to like, I kind of just want to let go and see what happens, should I do it? I'll pull these out and I'll just let them go and see what happens. Ow, motherfucker. Kind of jammed into my eye. So as far as the fit, like, their box goggles, it has a strap right here. You got a little Velcro strap on top right here to make that shorter. You got a little thing on the fucking side right there to adjust that. I just, they don't, I don't like box goggles. I have a big nose maybe or something and the nose isn't cut out right. It's, they're, they're on there, like, you can fly. Like, you're going to be able to fly a drone with these goggles. No, no problem whatsoever. I'm just spoiled and I have to have orcas or something like that. That's very nice. But these work. These totally work. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to drive to the field. I'm going to get a couple packs in on these goggles. I'm going to bring you all with me. And I'm going to forget the fact that I don't like box goggles. You know what I mean? I'm not going to hold that against these. I'm going to pretend like I'm a new pilot. I just got some freaking goggles. And I'm stoked to go fly. So I'm just gonna go out there and have a good time. I'm gonna fly my little drone. Oh, let me show you the drone real quick. So this is the Emax HD Zero Bind and Fly three and a half inch uh, Predator Hawk, I think. I think it's the Predator Hawk. I'll, I'll put the name there if that's the incorrect name, but we're gonna call it the Predator Hawk. Don't make fun of my propellers. These are the only T-mount three inch props that I have. I have no other ones, so I had to put on like some Cinewhoop fucking props from another project that I was working on. But it's kind of cool, man. This is just like a little park cruiser. Like it definitely has a lift because of the props and just cruises around. It's got HD zero. It's kind of the perfect little drone to do that. If you want to check this out, there'll be a link in the description. But that's enough talking out of me. Let's head over to the field and see how this thing does. This is the Whoop, the HD Zero Whoop board. So it's a 200 milliwatt VTX. I got the Emacs box goggles. Let's see what we can do. Oh yeah, shit, before we go to the field real quick, um, I forgot that these are the specs. In case you, you like reading numbers and things, these are the specs of the goggles. And if you don't want to wait till the end, they're $239. Yeah, they're $239. You want to know a little secret while I'm setting these up actually and putting the antennas on and shit? I don't, um, I haven't actually filmed the unboxing of this yet. I haven't, oh, did I bring the antennas? I haven't filmed the unboxing yet. This is the daytime and I'm just going to do the flight now, like the middle of the video. And then I'm going to go home and I'm going to film the unboxing and the intro. And then I'm going to film the, uh outro isn't that weird that i do that that's how my videos work i film the middle sometimes oh, this battery's gonna die i'm gonna run a battery with the uh, rubber duckies that come with it just to see what like the stock experience would be for somebody like just grabbing these oh boy and i'll do a second pack with the antennas that i run normally on my fucking analog goggles because it's right hand chp or whatever I, oh god this is a me thing i need glasses oh fuck me i guess we'll just go fly all fucking blurry um, 
I can't. Oh, this is this is mad blurry for me. Is this blurry for you? Is the camera fucked, or is this just me? I think it's just me. Okay, a little breakup halfway through the field. I'm just gonna cruise it. There's some breakup there. I okay. See, I'm way over here. If you can see me, I can't because it's blurry as a motherfucker. Let's see. ELRS should hold. So let's see how the signal does. I don't want to walk. I'll just drive my car in this fucking field. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Breaking up, breaking up. I don't want to walk quite yet. We'll do the range push when I have better antennas on. We'll, we'll push the range when I have better antennas on. Okay, so I went ahead and I put on the antennas that I use on my analog goggles. These are the exact two antennas that I use on my fucking Orcas. My analog goggles, these are my rider dies right here. Actually, this one isn't. My good True RC broke, so I just put on this Fox here, but it's working out fine. This right here, though, this True RC patch, this is my fucking little guy right here. Give him a little kiss. Oh, is anybody looking at me? Oh my god, these people are fucking staring at me. I think this is my 667th video that I've made, by the way. The last video that I made was like my 666th. That's some information you have now. One thing I did notice is, is uh oh, what did I notice? Yeah, okay. So when the quad was, uh, when the quad is real close, I had worse video. Oh, this is bad video. These are RCHP, right? I um, could have sworn all this is RCHP. Let's see, 200 milliwatts. Yep. R1. Oh, I feel like I'm getting worse video with these antennas and those rubber duckies. I was going to try to go all the way to the end of the field, but it ain't looking so hot even right here. Damn, them breakups and shit. Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's see. Oh, oh. If I go higher, maybe? I'm trying to pay, point my patch at it. I mean, I feel like I could have gone this far with the rubber duckies. Let's see what happens when I turn around if we just lose all fucking video. No, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I don't know if I can hit that gap. I don't know if there's scraggle. Let's just keep it. Oh, losing a bit of video there. Just keep it steady. All right, 200 milliwatts. I ain't expecting much, but I feel like we're getting worse performance on these fucking antennas, man. That is a little, uh, a little disappointing there. Maybe I should uh, put on the rubber duckies and fly it around again some more. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's, we're going to lose video. We're going to have to land this motherfucker. Oh, I'm behind myself, so that, that's probably why. That, yeah, definitely because I'm behind myself, because once we come directly ahead. You know what? I'm going to go stand outside real quick. I'm not going to narrate. I'm going to go stand outside and see if that helps and give this thing a damn chance in hell to look good. All right, so I'm standing outside of the car now using the antennas that I use for my analog setup. And I honestly don't know if the video is better or any better than the rubber duckies. Here's the test right here, kind of going through this gauntlet of trees to see if it'll break up. Now, I trust analog to always come back. I haven't flown HD0 enough to know when it'll come back, but it, it does. As you can see here, it looks just fine, but I really, really wanted to compare it to my analog signal. So I'm going to take my Cinewoop. I'm going to put it on 200 milliwatts, just like the HD0 is. And I'm going to try to fly the same little path to see what breakup looks like on analog versus HD0. This is my beloved Cinebot 30. I'm going to switch it down to 200 milliwatts on this analog VTX, and I'm going to fly from here to there. And we can do a little comparison how well that HD0 does on 200 milliwatts versus how my go-to analog setup does on 200 milliwatts in the exact same area. That's interesting, I think, maybe. Watch this. Cinewoop set to 200 milliwatts. I'm just going to leave it on the DVR. Is this, oh, this battery's almost dead anyway. What? Is this just going to drop? All right, well, let's see how 200 milliwatts on a... Analog gets us over HD. I feel like the HD0 was flashing like that was at this point. Um, eh, I'm so used to analog too, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be able to be like that was much worse or better or anything. Because I, I, I know what my analog is going to look like when I fly through it. I feel like HD0 was breaking up similarly right here. Let's go through the same little set of trees that we did to induce that breakup. I'm going to say it's about the same. I'm going to say it's about the same. HD0 just breaks up differently. You get that kind of like little squares and rainbow shit rather than a uh, good old analog, you know, how you just get that static everywhere. Same same sort of breakup, I'm going to say. Now, I remember when I came around here, it was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Same thing up until I got to about these trees. Although this is, you know, this is the Cinebot um, Bind and Fly, and I have a really nice module in here, the TBS Fusion. So this is, I'm, I'm impressed actually, you know, considering all that, I'm pretty impressed uh, with how HD Zero did on just those Emacs goggles and a 200 milliwatt VTX, man. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, I'm back home. That was the HD Zero Emacs budget 
goggle video. That was my video that I made on the Emacs goggles. Obligation fulfilled. And you may want to know what I think of these. Personally, personally, I'm getting the HD Zero goggles straight up from HD Zero, but those are like $500. If you want to spend half that money and get some box goggles, you can. These do exist. The screen that comes out is pretty freaking cool. I am a fan of that. I'm stoked that I now have like a little removable HD Zero screen. You should see if you can just buy that separately. If you want to try HD Zero and you don't want to buy the official HD Zero goggles, you can try these out. They're half the price and they have a little removable screen that I think is cool. Here's something else I appreciate is all my patrons. This is literally 80% of my income. Patreon.com forward slash block grinder. If you want to throw me a couple bucks a month because you appreciate my videos, I would love if you would do that. It's a holiday season. Everybody's feeling generous or some shit. Oh, no, you're broke because of the holiday? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine, man. Understandable. I do have to say a huge shout out to Billy Hackett, Boris the German, Fred805, J Rod FPV, Juicy FPV, Lucas Roca, Matty B FPV, Netcat FPV, Patrick Martin, Stompy FPV, Trent, TT FPV, Twan Solo, Volleytronics, and HempandFriends.com. Thank you very much for being my top tier patrons. If you want me to say your name at the end of every video I make, you can become a top tier patron today or wherever the wherever the thing is. Thank you very much for watching this little review video, everybody. I promise next review will be better. Press subscribe if you haven't done that yet because I'm trying to get to 40,000 subscribers. I'm super close. Help a young man live his dream of getting 40,000 YouTube subscribers. It's been my dream for over 74 years now. I'm almost to my goal. If you help me out with that, I would really appreciate it. All right, here's a song that I didn't make. But you don't have any HD Zero goggles?